So today I'm going to figure out what is wrong with this handheld vacuum cleaner. My girlfriend bought this one brand new and out of the box it worked for about 15 minutes and then just stopped working. So she threw it on the charger and it actually stopped charging and it would just no longer work and this is all you'd get out of it. So the batteries are pretty much dead and you can put it on the charger for longer than it would take normally charge with the ion batteries and you'd see no improvement. Uh, so after this one broke, she decided to go out and get another one, which is, is like a spitting image of this one, uh, but this one works just fine. And that's what it should sound like on a full charge. Now they look identical if you ignore the whole color scheme, uh, but if you look a little bit closer you'll see some differences that make me believe that this was a first model and then this was a uh, second model um, improved from this one because this one didn't turn out that good. So let's take a look at the bad one. Um, you can see on the back here it says 7.2 volts DC, 1.5 amp hours. Uh, and right here we have the contacts to charge it because it would just slide into a dock and it would charge just like that. Um, so pretty simple. The design is okay. I am not really have an opinion on that all too much. Uh, but if you compare it to this one, which is basically the same thing, you'll see a little bit, a little bit of oddities here. Uh, you'll notice that there are no tabs here for the sled. Of the sled dock and instead there is a little DC tunnel plug right up here and it looks identical. It looks as if they decided not to go with this mounting system because this was for some reason flawed. Uh, so it's pretty weird to note that. Also if you look you will see that this one says 3.6 volts DC uh, and 1.5 amp hours. So my initial opinion is or assumption rather is that this was the first model um, and it didn't work out, so they made this one, and they made some, like, changes to it to make it work a lot better. And overall, it does. Uh, so today we're going to be figuring out why exactly this one won't charge, and may hopefully fixing it, so that way we can have two at least, because these aren't really cheap. This one was, like, $23, and this one I'm not too sure. Uh, but they're not cheap, and it's kind of annoying that it just, do it just doesn't charge. I don't know if there's a warranty with it or what. Uh, but if there is, we're probably not going to be bothered to return it anyways. So let's crack it open. Um, before I do that, though, I would like to say that I did open this before. I opened this up about two weeks ago to change the... Not necessarily to change the batteries, but to actually look at the batteries on the inside. They are just two standard 18650 cells ran in series to get these 7.2 volts. Uh, so simple math would say that there's only one 18650 in here. Um... But yeah, there was two 18650 cells in here. I read the voltage with a multimeter, and the voltage was really low, so I thought the cells were bad. So I changed those out. It ran for a little bit because the cells I changed them out with were really good, um, but it would it refused to charge up again. So the problem clearly lies within the charge controller part of this thing, not necessarily the cells because they charged up just fine. So let's crack this thing open and see what's going on with the charge controller. Just to make sure it's not the batteries, I'm testing the batteries that came with it, and as you can see it reads 4.6 volts. But I'm actually able to charge it up to around 7.3 volts with my bench power supply, so it's clearly not the batteries that are wrong with this unit. So there appears to be something hiding underneath this heat shrink right here. My guess is that it's a reverse polarity protection diode. So just to make sure that it's not broken or reversed, I'm going to remove the heat shrink and test for a voltage drop to see if it's working. Okay. 
All right, so the reverse polarity protection diode checks out. So now it's time to hook up this charge controller to my bench supply and see if I can get the batteries to charge. As you can see, it's already drawing current, which is a really good sign. So I got my lab bench power supply hooked up here and it is charging the battery successfully which is really odd because I thought the problem was within this unit. Uh, turns out it's not though because if there was this wouldn't be working right now. It's drawing just under 1 amp at 9.8 volts of direct current. Um, and to prove that it's working we'll just push this button and you, you can hear it. That sounds how it should sound. Um, sounds perfect. It's drawing a decent amount of current from the uh, power supply and it's charging the battery so the problem isn't lying within this uh, so it's not the charge controller it's not the batteries so it has nothing to do with the actual unit itself so there's only one thing left to look at and that is the power supply the unit came with this is a black and decker uh, power supply that this is like the dock mount you would just slide this into it and it would charge it it is 12 volts DC at 210 milliamp hours so it should work just fine to charge this. So now let's plug this in and see what kind of output, output voltage we're getting from it. So these are the two contacts right here and it would slide into the unit like this and connect just like that and charge. So what I'm looking for is just to make sure we're getting an output voltage here. And we are, we're getting 16 point two volts of direct current but there's a little bit of an oddity if you look on the meter and see you'll actually see hold on one second you can actually see that there is a negative sign right here that means that the the voltage is negative so that means the two probes are in the wrong spot so if we go ahead and just swap them we'll get the right proper voltage to charge us at so what this means is that the handheld unit is fine, the batteries are fine, the charge controller is fine, the dock is the problem. Someone passed this dock with the wires in the wrong spot. So if we were to go ahead and, again, we'll, we'll do this right now, we got negative 16 volts right there, which is still a bit high, but I'm sure it drops with some circuitry on the inside. It's negative 16, so if we mark the... Um, if we mark the negative... The negative lead here with the sharpie just a little sharpie right there you'll see that this is the negative but if we were to go and actually put this into the unit you would actually see that the wires don't correspond so we're sending a negative voltage to the positive input and a positive voltage to the negative input which is completely fucked up i am actually kind of surprised this passed any quality control because um, clearly this is this is a huge mess up. I, I, it's kind of inexcusable for a product from Black & Decker and it kind of lowered my opinion of them. I'm kind of, uh, for lack of a better word, I am pretty pissed about this because it's something that should not be overlooked is polarity. How do you fuck that up? And I'm using the swear words based solely on shock right now. It's just kind of messed up that they would let something that stupid pass through and be sold as an item. So there's actually nothing wrong with the unit itself. It is this dock right here that is messed up, uh, which again pisses me off uh, beyond belief. And I didn't even buy the thing. Just the fact that a company would let this go out the doors of their sh of their uh, you know manufacturing warehouse or wherever the hell this was made and into a store to be sold only to have the wires crossed. That is such a rookie thing. Like that just that normally never happens. Uh, so it's it's an insane amount of bullshit, I think. Um, I'm kind of pissed about it, and I would imagine that if anyone else has this model and they're facing this problem, you would be pissed too, because this, this Black & Decker HandyVac thing, I think, retails for around 30 bucks, And that might not sound like a lot of money, but it's enough that if you're paying $30, you should get something that actually works, not something that's crossed and backwards. Now, the good thing about this is that there is probably a reverse protection diode on the charge controller that blocks out that negative input. So no damage was done to the charge controller or the batteries, which is really good. So that means just swapping these wires or contacts would actually fix the problem. 
So before I move on to the charging dock, I just want to make sure that uh, this part is emphasized. This little tab thing here slides right out. Um, so I just want to make, make it clear that you actually can't reverse this, so it's not an error from me. And if you were to try to, say, plug it in this way, it just won't fit in. So it's clearly the mistake is here, just like that. Uh, one other thing I didn't realize to check is actually if the polarity from these wires match up to the polarity on these batteries, uh, this charge controller, is to make sure the tabs themselves are going in the right place. So what I'll do real quick is just ring the grounds. And if the grounds ring, then it should be fine. So we're just going to go like this. Uh, there we go. So the ground's ring. So it's not this thing right here. It's not that someone messed up the wiring on this. It is the dock itself. So to fix this, all we're doing is just cutting the wires and soldering them to their opposite wire. Um, you can actually probably find a way to remove the tabs within the dock and just swap those around, but I didn't want to mess around with it because the plastic seemed really cheap and I didn't want to have to uh, break the dock to figure it out and then come up with a new way to charge it. So all I'm doing is just soldering these wires together and using some heat shrink to clean it up a little bit. I decided to cut as close as I could to the dock so that way there was a lot of strain relief. So now we're just going to test and make sure that we're getting the proper voltage reading, which we are. So now it's time to close the unit back up and actually drain the charge we got earlier from the bench supply. In order to do this, I'm just going to keep the unit powered on for a little bit. So it's been a little bit on the charger, so let's take it off and see how it sounds. So that means it is good. I fixed it. Uh, again, I just reversed these wires on it, which is very stupid. Just when you look at it and see the black wire going to the white and the white to black. It's annoying as heck, but who cares? Um, it works now, which is good. Um, hopefully this helps someone who bought the same vacuum, maybe get a return on it or some sort of uh, refund for your money instead of doing this because that's what I should have done, but I didn't care enough to do that. Uh, so thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.